In our last videos, we covered the shoulder roll, and then the shoulder roll with the slap out. Today, we're going to cover the forward roll, and it's back slap out all in one video. Stay tuned. We'll talk about it. Welcome to Shihan's Dojo. I'm Shihan Marty Husband, and I'm here today to help you build your skills and knowledge in the martial arts. Before we get started, I wanted to stress that you make sure that if you've never trained like this, that you find someone who's qualified in rolling, grappling, or ground fighting to teach you how to do this properly and safely. And if you haven't watched the previous videos, I suggest you go out there and watch them again. I'll set a link up here at the top for you. They will help you understand what is going on better here because I'm not covering all the safety aspects I did in the other two videos. Otherwise, let's get started and talking about the forward roll. I'd originally planned to do this in two videos and break it down like I did with the shoulder roll and the shoulder roll slap out. But seeing that we talked about many of the safety procedures in that, I decided to combine them into this video. If you can follow the safety tips we recommended in the last video, this should be easy for you to learn. Now, like I said, the first part of this we're going to cover is the forward roll. Like we did in the previous videos, we start from our knees to learn this roll. We're basically going to put two hands in front of us, and tucking our head down to our collarbone, we're going to dive straight over the top of us, rolling as smoothly as possible. In order to keep this roll smooth, you need to make sure your body maintains a curve, and be able to stand up right when you get to the end of it. We're not doing the turnaround we did with the shoulder roll to see what happened with the opponents. We're either diving here, or, or coming out of some sacrifice throws such as the tomanagi in order to go forward and alleviate any problems we might have once we connect to the ground. Now when you're doing this particular role, you have to make sure that your head stays tucked. I spoke of it in the last video, don't look at the ground, it's very dangerous to do so. Also when you're springing over here, really force your legs over fast and you should be able to clear your head pretty easily and roll rather smoothly. A lot of beginners here tend to go real slow, and they actually land on their shoulder and their neck area right here, which can be quite painful if they don't get enough thrust off the ground. Your main goal here is to try to get this roll smooth as possible, and to help curb your fear of the ground that you might have built inside of you. It's a natural thing to be worried when you're trying to work on the ground or jumping towards it, but in doing so, you alleviate that fear of the ground a little bit more for the control you can have for yourself. Once you get comfortable with these forward rolls, then you can do a continuous roll across the floor and this will help you learn to transition smoothly into each of these types of rolls. Also another drill you might be able to do and I'll show you here is basically you can roll forward twice, roll backwards using the shoulder roll only doing it in reverse and then forward roll again. The main object of that type of a drill is to try to keep it smooth and as non-stop as possible. It will take you a long time unless you're already very proficient at it in order to do that type of smooth action that is necessary. The importance here is that you're building the confidence with this type of roll and able to understand how your body should feel when it hits the ground like that. Now remember, this is not a diving roll, it's a roll and you have to roll safely across the floor, not at the floor. So take your time in trying to understand how to do this and try not to do some quick diving ones right off the bat without knowing what you really need to do with your own body. Many times I've told my students it's not the ground that's going to hurt you, it's the mistake you make trying to roll on the ground that will. People have to understand that you can use gravity but don't use gravity down, but try to alleviate it by taking it on at an angle. People always seem to want to dive straight for the floor. And I think a lot of students get hurt so bad the first few weeks because they think it's supposed to dive, they don't see how important it is to roll and move away from where you're landing. As with these drills, after you've done them in a while and you feel confident in what you're doing, then you can go into the next process of the back slap out. Now, in order to better understand what the back slap out is, we're going to do a drill before we add it to the roll itself. It's really kind of simple and in some ways a little scary if you start off doing it standing. So I would recommend that you not do this drill standing right now. We'll cover the back slap outs for different types of throws later in the series. The important thing you have to get from this type of drill is what it feels like when you come down on the back. You will actually not be going the same direction, but you have to understand how you must flatten out on the floor and eventually how you must bridge to keep from hurting your tailbone or, or other parts of your back or neck. The first thing you want to do is basically cross your arms. Once you've crossed your arms, then you can squat down and again, tuck your head to your collarbone. 
I can't stress this enough on any rules that you ever do that needs to have your chin down and it must stay down. Once you've got your arms and crossed and your chin tucked, then you can squat down towards the floor. And basically the first few times, just roll backwards and slap out trying to get a feel. After you've done this several times in a roll, then you can actually kind of jump back onto your back and land flat to see what it's going to feel like. The more confident you get, you can stand up higher and do it or, or However you feel comfortable, never rush this. If it takes you three weeks to learn, then take that three weeks. If it takes you a week to learn, congratulations, you're a great athlete. If your head is bouncing off the floor, that also means you're releasing your chin from your collarbone too soon. Keep it there till the whole thing is done and that you've slapped both arms down at your side Oh, a couple fists away from your hips. Now, I always use a couple fists by measuring, in my mind, that far away. So, it looks pretty silly, but it works, and it'll keep you from throwing your arms up too high and possibly dislocating your shoulders. If you do not keep your head tucked, though, and you do start banging it off the ground, think of it like this. What would happen to the back of your head if you accidentally fell on concrete or were thrown on concrete and landing flat with your head bouncing like a basketball? You probably might not wake up, or if you do, you might not feel so good with a concussion or worse. So, Take this precaution very, very seriously. As you can see here now, I'm introducing that mat that I showed you in the last video. You basically are going to do the same thing with that mat, except you're going to cross your arms, you'll sit down on the mat, let it fall backwards, and you can learn to land on the flat of your back. Again, follow the safety principles, make sure your head is tucked. Do this several times. It'll help you to understand the jarring action that often accompanies this type of a fall. Remember, let gravity and the mat do the work for you. Don't do any extra things until you're confident of what you can do. Once you're accomplishing that mat, you can start doing it faster and faster. Take it slow first and then try to sit down and go down faster each time. Once you do that, your body will be a little more comfortable and you can have a good feel for what you're trying to accomplish with that type of a landing. Once you feel comfortable with this type of a backdrop, then you can add, begin to add it to your roll. Again, start from a crouched position and you're going to do a forward shoulder roll. And instead of going all the way through, you're going to let your back flatten out as well as have your feet hit the ground and slap out beside. Now that's a lot of things for you to remember. You might have to start doing things one at a time. Do the forward roll with the back coming down. Maybe your feet don't land properly, but just do it slow. And once, you're, once you're there, you can understand how the slap outs and the feet action will actually help you in dispersing the energy that you're attaining with such a speed or force, whether you're being thrown or whether or not you're doing it for yourself. Once you get used to that, then as you're landing, then learn to make a slight bridge once you come down with the landing, to keep your tailbone from hitting the ground. Now you can easily, if you think about that, break your coccyx or worse if you don't do this type of an operation and you fall on concrete. Now understanding this takes a little bit of effort and it does take a lot of repetition to get your body to do it without you thinking. But really concentrate on making sure you have that bridge. Now, if you're a ground fighter, you may actually just want to make sure you bridge high there in case there's somebody coming in or you're trying to get somebody off you that when the, that when the roll was taking place, they might have had full contact with you and not let you go. That bridge then will help you to possibly get the fighter off you or take control of the situation. Now, when you're watching here in slow motion, I'm doing this really slow so you see the slight bridging action I do as I go forward. It's not much but it's enough to let you see how high you should really come up off the ground for just a normal forward roll slap out. As you did with the forward rolls, do the same thing with the forward roll slap outs. Try to do them continuously through doing those drills like you're rolling down the floor. This will help you be more comfortable again with the floor and give you a better feeling of your knowledge and your control that you can have during these types of rolls or slap outs. The more repetitions you do of these types of rolls and slap outs will go into your muscle memory and allow you to be able to handle a situation where you might have to do that in real life without thinking. Doing this a couple times is not going to make you an expert at it. It will take a lot of practice. Do it every practice. Make sure you add it with your shoulder rolls and slap outs that you did later. Later on we'll talk a more in-depth study on falling forward and falling backwards. Now with the exception of the forward drops that we talked about earlier, the rolls and drops that we have taught you here are probably the most common that will be used in Jiu Jitsu, Judo, 
or many of the other grappling arts that are out there. Once you feel comfortable with these, you're now able to get up to a point where somebody can throw you and do it a lot more safely than you did before. Now don't go out and have somebody start tossing you around. It's just like the shoulder rolls. It takes a little bit of ingenuity and somebody who knows what they're doing to show you how to fall properly and use the knowledge you've already gained with these rolls. In the next month or two, we'll get some more videos out here for the Jiu-Jitsu series on how to do sweeps, reaps, throws, and do them safely with a partner. We'll break them down in their basic format and then how to use them in self-defense. Make sure you find somebody that you can work with a couple times a week too. If you only can see your instructor once or so a week or ever a few weeks, Try to find a karate partner, jiu-jitsu partner, whatever you're doing, and roll with them almost every class you can. That way, when it comes time, you don't have to think about these, and you'll be able to just do them without thought. Now, don't forget to subscribe down there. Tell your friends about Shihan's Dojo. Share it. Like this video so we can continue to make them for you guys out there. And leave a comment. Tell us what you'd like to see, questions or things you'd like to have answered that I might be able to do for you. Leave them in that comment section, because I'll get to them as soon as I can, and maybe, who knows, in a few weeks we might be able to put something up for you. We hope we've helped your understanding and knowledge a little bit, and we look forward to seeing you here again on Shihan's Dojo.